This video shows how to build the uh, afterburner for the E-Flight F-14. Um, I looked on the market and I couldn't find any um, uh, afterburner center burners for the E-Flight F-14 with the uh, 40 millimeter um, EDF. So I um, built my own. Okay, um, the parts that are required for this is there's a Cyclone uh, Twin 50 uh, center burner. Um, which is the smallest I could find and that's from RC Castle and I'll put links to all of this down in the comments below um, also you need to have center burner mounts so those I custom built and, and uh, the files for them are out on Thingverse um, and then you also need to get a JST connector which is a small connector that fits into this new receiver that they have in the, um, in the F14 and we'll go through uh, what that looks like here in, in a second. Um, so those are the parts that you need. Uh, the building steps is basically to, um, you know, obviously you print the center burner mounts. Okay, so make two of those. Um, you need to remove the gear um, because we're, you're not going to, you're going to end up with not having a steerable nose wheel okay uh, and we'll see why that is in a second but uh, you need to remove the gear and I remove the main gear it just makes it easier to do the um, uh, the work that we need to do um, and then also need to um, split the thrust tube bottoms right so we need to take the the bottoms off the thrust tubes we'll, sh we'll show that um, we're going to glue the um, the center burner mounts onto the EDF uh, and then glue the center burner lights onto those mounts um, we'll construct a wiring harness. Um, we'll use the wiring harness that comes with the uh, Cyclone center burners and we'll modify that to add the JST connection uh, and then we'll also shorten the wires um, because they're, they're too long for, for, the, for the aircraft here. Um, we'll, we'll show how that, how that works. Um, next step is to install a wiring harness. Um, there we're going to we're going to be using the um, servo connector in the receiver that's used for the steering okay um, the reason why that was chose is that um, on all the other unused um, connectors that are on the receiver I could not get them to um, show up on my transmitter right to have ability to control them so what I chose to do was to use the um, uh, the steering uh, servo um, and then we'll see later on that we do a mix where we can um, couple the throttle into that steering servo and then uh, uh, st steering servo connector okay or port okay and then that's the port where the where the um, center burner lights will go in and we'll, we'll see that in a little bit okay um, and then the, the last step then is to like I mentioned earlier to program the the mix for the throttle to rudder uh, and, and glue it all together and, and there you go okay so before we get into the build we'll look at the um, the afterburner center burner and the impact to the thrust right obviously we're all concerned about uh, how much power our, en our engine can produce and, and how how responsive um, our jet is so the the center burner um, from the 50 millimeter is is actually a little larger if you if you just take off the, um, the the light assembly itself that assembly is a little larger than the size of the motor that's in the F14 okay um, and so the motor is roughly around 18 millimeters in diameter and this light assembly itself is 22 so it's slightly larger so in testing that I did um, using the same battery um, I tested I've got two models I've got two F14s one with the center burner and one just stock and with the uh, the stock one it produced around 420 grams of thrust and then on the version that has the center burner it's about 370 so basically it's roughly around a 12 percent loss in thrust okay so um, while that is significant uh, you know as you'll see in the videos you know it still flies fine um, and uh, it really looks cool so in my case I do have one version that that does have the center burner um, that I, that I um, hand launch and belly belly land and uh, it looks really cool cool in, in the sky so so as I mentioned before 
um, you do need to have uh, two of the um, center burner mounts okay um, the ones that actually come with the cyclone are, are way too big um, and so I had to make my own mounts that were much smaller um, and so you can find them up on, on thingverse.com uh, under uh, I think if you just do a search on E-Flight F14 you should be able to find them okay they're they're not perfect um, if you looked at the the EDF inside the F14 it's three um, brackets or, or mounting brackets if you will that that actually hold the motor onto the um, the housing itself and they also are um, not perpendicular to the the motor if you will so if you look at that you'll see that they're kind of skewed so it was a little bit of a challenge to get the right uh, orientation uh, for those three mounts but um, it, it's pretty close you do have to play with it a little bit but it is doable to, to get it on there and what I did is I glued it on um, with uh, foam tack uh, that way if I ever decided that I want to take those center burners off you know it's real easy to, to wiggle them off and then remove the um, the foam tack glue okay and um, I also use foam tack uh, to glue on the light assembly so on the light assembly um, I did uh, it, it it comes in the the mounting bracket that comes with cyclone is in two parts there's the leg part with with a base to where the legs attach and that you can pretty much just pry off they're just um, uh, pressed on with these little tabs there's another disc that that, that uh, major piece uh, connects to and that disc is glued onto the back of the light assembly so there I did have to just kind of run a um, uh, exacto blade in there and if you run it around inside there it'll eventually come off it wasn't too big of a deal and then that's all I used was the light assembly and you see that um, in the picture here um, that's glued onto the mounts okay okay so here's a picture of the um, the center burner assembly um, from Cyclone for the twin 50 millimeter. Um, you can see that there's um, two two light assemblies up the top. Um, there's uh, a long uh, wire with a black uh, thing in the middle. That's actually the controller, and you can see that there's a throttle cable, the black and white uh, cable there. Um, and then the next wire is a, a Y. Um, so basically, it, it it splits into the two uh, center burners. Uh, on, in the Y. Um, they do have a, um, a throttle cable. There's another Y of a lar lar larger, larger Y. It's for the throttle cable. I didn't end up using that. And then they have a 3S and a 4S connector adapter and I did use the 4S because I'm using a, a 4S 2200 in the F14. Okay, so that's how it comes from from the from the uh, you know when you receive it, and I'll show a picture here in a little bit where I actually modified this quite a bit to shorten the wires, and then I'll also add a connector onto that throttle um, cable there, the black and white wire there. Okay, so here's a couple videos of um, doing some of the construction on it, basically removing um, the the thrust tubes um, and. Um, what that would look like up on on these things now sometimes they take a little bit of uh finagling and, and a little bit of force but they just pop out they're just uh basic clips as you can see right there okay they just go right in there and just pop them out and that'll make it a little easier when we work on this section uh here so here you can see there's a piece of tape that goes across here and then we'll have to cut all the way out to down here and this section right here comes off okay so here carefully cutting along uh, down here up to here you know back all the way to where the exhaust nozzle is right here okay cutting around the exhaust nozzle and then on the back side here We'll do the same thing just following the seam line uh, that you can see right here okay the one thing to be careful of is right here okay and I can pop this hatch open you want to be careful where those wires are right there right when you're using your blade and make sure that you don't cut those wires obviously but uh, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we've got the, um, the first one off. Um, 
just had to go around the whole thing with a, a fresh exacto uh, blade and just be careful on cutting it, right? And so here you can see the engine, it's uh, glued in place. So we'll have to rock it back and forth like the manual says, and hopefully it'll come off. I ultimately I decided not to remove the uh, motor and the EDF. Um, I didn't want to risk tearing up the foam. Here, once I split the uh, thrust tubes, I uh, sprayed them with uh, silver paint, and that helps reflect the, um, the center burner lights out the back. Here you see the center burner mounts. Uh, they're mounted onto the EDFs, and you can see the, um, the red wire uh, coming through for the two center burner uh, controller uh, leads. And then the wire that has the, the uh, cellophane tape on there, or masking tape on there, is the wire going to the, um, the, the steering uh, servo port. So this shows the modification to the uh, the wiring, basically the wiring harness for the um, center burner lights. So starting from uh, right to left, um, I, I took the connector off of the um, the battery adapter and just soldered those two together um, just to make that clean because it's real tight in there. This is where the hatch, uh, the canopy hatch attaches. Um, I didn't do the only thing I did to the thir the thr the throttle cable there is you can see it's kind of hard to see but that that's where I attached that little um, JST connector okay um, and then from that black controller in the middle back towards the left there um, I shortened those wires quite a bit because they were fairly long okay um, and then um, I left the the connectors in there because this is where I was able to fish those two connector wires down into um, where the where the receiver's at. Um, and then I was able, once I fished those through there with those connectors, I was able to connect it, those connectors up to get to the, um, the light assembly. I also shortened the wires quite a bit on the, um, the light assembly there. You can see that they're only just a few inches, whereas um, the original ones were, were, I don't know, maybe 18 inches long. So anyways, uh, with the ruler there, hopefully you, that'll give you some guidance as to um, how long each of those segments should be. So here you can see that I've got the um, wiring harness assembly in there. Um, it's right next to the, um, the linear um, servo there that controls the sweep uh, mechanism. Um, and where the red circle is, is where I fished the throttle cable and those two um, uh, light um, wires through. Okay, there's a little hole right there next to the receiver and I was able to fish it through there. And then on the controller itself, I just tie wrapped it to the, um, uh, the battery cables there just to kind of keep it in place. And then it fits nicely in that little uh, groove there um, with the, um, uh, the top on. And then here's another picture of the wires coming through before they're connected. Uh, the servo was connected there. And this one you can see um, right here uh, where that um, the throttle cable connects into port number two um, uh, in the receiver. And then you can see the two light assemblies that are connected now in this picture here. So then the last thing that we do is we set up a mix here so that the throttle is uh, driving the, um, the rudder channel on the transmitter um, and then that way um, whatever the throttle does um, the same signal would be sent out that um, rudder channel um, and that's at port number two on the receiver and we set it up as a hundred and a hundred and we just enable it all the time. Um, you may have to reverse the rudder servo um, if, if it's not uh, tracking properly to, to your throttle control. Um, I think I remember I had to do that, but in any case, just that one mix there and that'll get the, um, the throttle and, and the, um, the lights hooked up together. At this point, it should be ready to go.